Testing. Hello and welcome to What Makes This Layout Great, the live edition. For those of you turning, tuning in live, thanks for letting me know that my microphone was muted. Not sure what was going on there with my streaming software. But now you should be able to hear me. And it's great to be with you tonight. And if you're watching this after the fact, well, thank you for joining us on the replay. Tonight we are looking at the Commonwealth Railway. It is an end scale design that we started last week. And I'm going to be reviewing a little bit about what we covered and some changes I've made to the route between last week and today and what we have in store for tonight. So with that said, let's take a look. So the Commonwealth Railway, fictional uh, transcontinental Canadian Railroad. You've got Canadian Pacific, Canadian National, and this world. There's also the Commonwealth Railway. This is the Yoho subdivision uh, as named by a viewer. And I'll look up who that viewer was in a moment because I want to make sure they get credit for it. Um, but this is the Yoho sub of the Commonwealth Railway. Uh, it is an end scale track plan, approximately uh, 12 feet wide by about five or six feet. Uh, if we pull up the base maps, it's, I think it says here. Um, you can see what the finished product is kind of going to look like here from this 3D rendering. Um, it's a, a basically a double loop uh, inside outside with a long single track main and passing siding uh, a lot of railroad to run in just 12 feet as we discovered last week so we're going to be continuing construction last week we got all the track in place we got this backdrop uh installed that was a custom asset that i created and we did the scenery on this waterfront scene i have since uh, gone in and tweaked this some more I've also installed signals along the entirety of the route. One of the things that's neat, so this track plan is actually originally by Tom Daneman, and he was going to build the layout in end scale. He never completed it before he ended up moving, but he was basing it off the Montana Rail Link. And one of the key features of Montana Rail Link is the fact that up until the late 2000s, they were still using semaphore signals. So he actually allotted that in the plan and I think they are so neat. I think it's it's a nifty thing to have uh, in between. So when we do our playtime at the end of our root building, you'll get to see those in action. They are they are really nifty assets. And I think it's it gives character. It gives a sense of history to this railroad. So we're modeling this as a sort of late '80s or early '90s mainline. But um, obviously, the air is flexible. So we have those semaphores in there. Uh, we've mainly gone with a bunch of searchlights, though, for the primary signals. Feels like a nice classic Western thing to do if you look at things like Southern Pacific and Santa Fe and so forth. It, it kind of has the right feel. Canadian Pacific. Uh, so, so many railroads use searchlights. They're, they're just, they're a good uh, signal to use uh, and they feel like they fit the area. So uh, did a little bit of refinery for those who are tuning in uh, again who saw us last week root building just to kind of get this scenery locked in. I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. We've got this really neat causeway. I might make this little inlet a, a bit more swampy but I kind of like it as is. It may just end up seeing you know now that I'm looking at it I'm thinking a culvert might look nice here to kind of as a drainage thing that the railroad might install. Um, but uh, we'll get to super detailing that at another stage. Uh, we'll work our way over to what we're going to have going on tonight. Um, here we have a lot of what I've done for the in-between, uh, which is just getting more trees on this section. I still probably want to place some grass splines, but the objective was just to get what I call the, the magazine cover finished. So having a nice scene in place for if you're trying to get the, the causeway in the foreground and the mountains in the background, I was just trying to make sure that that was in place. Today, what we're going to be working on uh, is this transition or what I'm envisioning as a transition from 
mountains and, and well, all of it's mountainous, but from more forested mountains to more kind of, I guess you'd call them scrubby mountains, like less trees, more just rolling hills with grass. So what we're going to play with is how effectively can we transition from more dense forest to that sense while it still looks like a cohesive whole because we're not doing any sort of scenic divide or anything that's completely separating these we want to keep that nice open facade we want to keep it that welcoming mountain vista scene but just adding a little subtlety to how we segue out of that because yeah we could just continue to do foresting but i think it's fun to experiment i think it's fun to try new stuff so how are you guys doing tonight uh, i see some of you joining us in the chat and i look forward to answering any questions you might have about layout design uh suggestions that you have for me as we're building this look forward to to hearing your thoughts this is something i built uh this is probably the big thing i built in the uh between episodes this trestle here uh finding Good steel trestle assets in for trains with a Z could be tricky. Uh, so I ended up just doing stone arches, uh, which I've seen enough photos of done elsewhere. So this trestle is based on the Skyline trestle on Montana Railing, which does have steel supports. But again, those are hard to find for this sim. So instead we're using stone. And honestly, I think they look kind of beefy. I, I like how robust it makes this bridge look. So it's not as lean and slender as was initially envisioned by its designer, but that's kind of the fun of it, is being able to take track work and, and play around with different ideas of bridges, different ideas of, ideas of tunnel portals, just because the track's there, even if you're adhering to the track 100%. And we're actually not. Um, we did deviate there, and we'll get to that in just a moment too. But it's good to to explore options and that's why I love group building this sim and I encourage you guys to follow along the show uh, both tonight and in general because then you get to see how one track plan can yield so many different results. Here's the, the one I wanted to do this uh, as a just keeping to the track plan as envisioned design but I had to make this change because it just completely improves the flow of operations especially when we get to the cement plant here and that improvement is having this uh second line uh, the the siding leading directly to the cement plant siding so if we bring up the track plan you can see from here i'm doing this because it's easier to show you on this than it would be to kind of tuck the assets out of the way you've got the double tr the double tracks the single track passing siding they converge so you've got this single track passing under the bridge and then splitting again to the cement plant and then going up uh, to behind the scenery. What we discovered when we were playing with this last week, and that's another advantage of being able to play test in a train simulator environment like this, is realizing how much of a choke point this was. Derpy Possum says, Happy St. Patrick's Day. Ha yes, Happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm actually... I'm wearing green and it wasn't even intentional. Uh, I've kind of forgotten. So thank you for reminding me. And oh, I mean, oh yes, I totally planned it to be green today. But uh, looking at the track here, but having this as a choke point, yeah, operationally you get something out of that. But A, it meant setting your cars off on this hill. And this is a 3% grade. So you need to have something to hold your cars back if you were trying to switch this in real life. Because, of course, you don't have handbrakes, especially not on end gauge equipment. But also, it means that nothing can flow through here. You, you can't have any mainline traffic as long as that local is tying up the cement plant. So, what we've done instead is by putting this parallel track in, once the local goes in to do its work at the cement plant, it's off the main. It's even off the second siding. So the local could come in, go into the siding. So if there's a train waiting for it on the main, then that train can take off. And then once it backs in to do its work at the cement plant, 
it's off the main, it's off the siding, so you could be fleeting mainline traffic and uh, on the main and the siding and have the cement plant working. Three train movements, essentially, at the same time. And that's not even including the helper movements, which we explored last week as well. So I just, I made this change because I feel like it's a minor flaw. It's a, it's a minor tweak, but boy, does it just open up the possibilities. So, as I say, today we are going to be finishing the scenery in this area a bit. There's a, a dirt road that leads up to these tunnels. We'll touch that a little bit, but the big thing we're going to be trying to play with tonight is how we can transition from this heavily forested area to these grasslands. Let's see if we can make that work as best we can. I've got a big bottle of water for tonight. You'll notice that every week my, my water consumption goes up a little bit more because I reach the end of three hours of streaming and realize, oh crap, I'm actually really thirsty. So we're gonna avoid that issue tonight. And we've got some cool new toys with uh, to play with tonight that we'll, we'll use as well as far as motive power is concerned. So, uh, first thing I, I feel like Let's start off with a bridge. And there's some assets that I've pre-shopped for. I just have to remember what they are and why I selected them. Now the concrete, that part comes later. Um, yes, okay. So we're gonna be kind of kit bashing elements to make our girder bridge, starting with some girder sides. And applying heights to them as so. It's, you, you could argue that maybe this shouldn't be a, a, a conventional girder bridge because a conventional girder bridge would be straight, but I like the look of it too much. And I've got a, a nice little detail that I want to add that's going to look right at home on this bridge. And there might be curved girder bridges that would, you know, there's a prototype for everything as I'm told, and I think there's some truth to that. And then we will split the spline, and there we go. Might get into some earthworks too, seeing how that goes. But that, that gives us a nice wide space to work with. We might actually shorten this approach a bit here, a little bit. The trick being, we gotta leave enough room because otherwise we start to dig into the track and that does not look good. We're going to go with kind of a gentle rise on this side into the bridge. See, already it cuts into the track. Something that's a lot easier to do in with uh, actual model railroading is you're not limited to a gridscape. But you can kind of get close enough a lot of times with your, with your land working in the sim that you, you get a basic feel for what you're going to do, and obviously it helps to generate that mental image that makes the layout construction that much easier. Can I redeem hydrate? Uh, not sure what you mean by that, CJ. I mean... Hydrating is a good thing, but I'm not sure specifically what is being referred to there. <laughs> so how are your weeks going, guys? Any any excitement uh, rail fanning-wise, layout construction-wise? Feel free to share your, your recent uh, successes and, and triumphs and how you're just having fun these days, because I think we all need to have a, a good amount of fun. I think we need to build that in as a conscious effort. Honestly, this has been such a busy week. I, I've, uh, I, I got into the root editor a little bit over the weekend to be able to do the changes that I talked about earlier, but uh, I, I didn't get to do as much root building as I would have liked. Hopefully this weekend I'll have a, a little bit more time for that. But these live streams are obviously a, a good opportunity to do that kind of thing as well. We're going to have to adjust the height because this track is, in fact, on a grade. 
And so to get those to be the exact same height, we're gonna get the height from the one and apply it to the other. Once it once we find the point at which you might have to separate them to get them to. Yep, there we go. That one dropped. Now we can move this one back into place. And that's going to need to be dropped a little bit more as well. Uh, oh, it's uh, the hydrating steamer joke. Sorry, you lost me on that one. Uh, siding extension, very good operational improvement indeed. Yeah, I th I, I'm glad you think so, Superbird. And I'm... I, I, that's what I'm looking forward to uh, to experimenting with. I actually I want to add another side into that, uh, but we'll get to that a bit later. I keep saying we'll get to things later. I don't want to overpromise how much we get to in the stream alone. Um, goal is to try to get to as much stuff as we can tonight, but uh, there probably is going to be some super detail. I I think this is going to be the the last night we do live streaming of this route because I think after today we'll hopefully have enough of a sense of what it's going to look like and at that point it's just fine tuning and trying to get it to look good as a playable train sim experience. Because um, obviously one of the benefits of doing this in the sim is you might only need it for the sake of just, hey, I want to look at my track in a three-dimensional space. I don't need scenery. I don't need landscape. Uh, or you may want to go the full distance. Um, and I go the full distance with these typically just because I am envisioning it as a as something that people will download and play with. Again, all of the routes you see on what makes this layout great, both the live streams and the, the live streams are content that will be released, depending on when you're watching this, of course. And the edited episodes are routes that are already available for download. Speaking of routes uh, available for download and live stream versus edited episode, uh, first Patreon shout out of the night. Uh, there is a new episode of What Makes This Layout Great available on Patreon for Patreon subscribers. Uh, for just $5 a month, you're getting early access both to episodes of the Roundhouse Podcast, and What Makes This Layout Great. So that's a nice two-for-one deal. Uh, and you're supporting the show and, and helping to, to build up the kind of content we could do. So if you're not already supporting the Roundhouse Podcast slash What Makes This Layout Great, consider going to patreon.com slash the Roundhouse. I really appreciate the support. And it's because of my patrons that we get to do cool stuff like this. So... I encourage you to check it out if you haven't already. And again, brand new episode that you can check out uh, ready for you there. We uh, are taking a look at the Susquehanna and New York route. Uh, is that the one I want? Yes, that's the one I want. And we get to talk about fun things like timetable and train order and... Uh, it's this very nifty layout built um, in HO scale by a guy named Michael Hawk, um, who generously invited me a three year. Actually, it's the route that got me hooked on everything that you're seeing here. It was the first route I ever fell in love with as a train layout that made me go, I want to take this home with me, but I can't take it home with me. It's gigantic and it's also his. So I built it in, a, in the sim. And the fun of building that just led to another project, led to another project, and now here we are, and this is uh, what I'm doing all the time. We're gonna put some super elevation on this curve because we did that for the um, for the the causeway, and I think it just adds that little bit of visual intensity having super elevated curves. If you're modeling some type of mainline. Um, it's, it's a nice thing to have in there because it just gives that little sense of drama and that sense of heft and weight. Thanks for some great photos, too. Uh, White Star, working on a three-child logging model railroad in TRS 2019. Well, I hope that's going well for you, White Star. And 
Uh, hope you're feeling better after uh, oh, your last week. I, I know last week you were feeling a bit down, so hope that things are going better for you this week. Uh, look forward to seeing what logging creation you come up with. Oh, so so much fun to be had with logging railroads in this sim. That is for sure. Um, I I could probably build nothing but logging railroads. It's one of those things that I'm mindful of now that I'm creating these routes in part to share with you of trying to vary uh, what all I, I create so there's a little bit of variety. Which is why we're doing something a bit more modern with this route. Okay, now let's finish off this bridge. Uh, so we got the deck in place and now we're going to add some uh, beams underneath to support what we have going on here. And I might hide the track for visibility's sake. The placement of this isn't too critical because this is just the underside of the bridge. It's hardly something you'll be staring at consistently, but just enough that I want it to look okay. Like, especially looking underneath here, it's like, okay, there's actually something there and it's not just blank. Again, this is a detail where if you were just trying to visualize your layout and you weren't going into to actually play with it, a lot you could probably skip details like this but we're building this for play value in the sim we, we go into the details now yes this is ballasted track can we put some uh just trestle decking in there i think um i might actually have to download some track for that oh up into content manager and see if that's a quick thing that I can just put in there. And, uh, rails. No, 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 not rails only. Um, tie plates bridge, right? Uh, maybe. Ties. Yeah, we'll try that. I think that might be it. Oh, no, 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 that should be it. 132 ties. I'm not seeing 132 ties. If it says it's installed. Oh, because it's just the mesh. Right, okay, if we go to the mud station, let's see, 132 pound bridge, and tunnel. This is why I try to make sure I save you guys from the shopping, because I don't like going into it. If I can't find it in another 20 seconds, we'll move on. Because I don't want to get too stuck on this kind of thing. That's one of the reasons why I was so excited when this was a, a route that only had one building. I thought, great, I'm not going to have to go shopping for tons of content. Uh, as far as, oh, I need a building that fits this. Well, I'm not finding anything, so that's going to be something we'll leave till later. I, I'm, honestly, it's interesting. Um, when you look at modern bridges and you realize that a lot of them are built with... Uh, oh, we got to turn off the base maps. I'll make it easier. A, a lot of uh, modern bridges are built where it's kind of like a road bridge and they, they have a, a concrete deck, not truss work and you have the ballast that's just uh laid on top uh like as if it was being laid on ground i find that interesting now does this asset allow rolling because if it does oh it does not allow rolling so we'll just have to get it up there and this is going to be an interesting balance because it's already sticking through the ballast but then you can kind of see how it's it's tiered. I think what we'll probably end up doing is building a second layer just to keep a consistent bottom even though the bridge is climbing. And we'll also, actually, this would be a good time to make sure that, hey, we've got uh, the clearance to be able to fit something under that. And it is oof, tight. Ah, <sighs> mm. 
now I'm trying to think if we could, maybe we do just put some sort of deck on it because yeah, that's, yeah, and it looks kind of odd anyway. Okay, so plan B is we don't do that and we see if we could just do some kind of, uh, not this, um, trying to think what would look good. Let's search deck and see what we come up with. At least if I'm searching for assets in the game, you can see what I'm doing, so that's better than nothing. Um, see, I like this as a bridge. Oh, no. Um, it just says, does it have supports underneath? Hmm. I like this as a bridge. It's maybe a little old school for, for this, but I kind of like it. And it's going to work more easily than, than trying to kit bash this. So, all right. So much for that plan. Plan B. Bridge building time. And we may end up undoing this too, but I, this is what we're going to go with for the sake of the stream, for the sake of um, something I, I've got to show you guys. Um, and we'll try to get the height best we can so that we're getting just the ties and not too much else. And then we'll lock that in straight. And we curve it around and then we'll put in another straight section here um, and then we'll height adjust it because it's doing some very weird things and then place it right about here and might have to put a spline point in the middle of that just to get it to line up nice because for some reason it doesn't want to the curve is slightly different between the bridge and the and the track. I could go with that. I mean, it's maybe, you could make the case of that it's a bit, um, bit weaker than what you'd see on actual class points, but, you know, this this is a railroad still using their outcodes and MLWs. Maybe, maybe they're saving money. That is uh, tight, but, you know, I, I think in for the sake of just saying it's a bridge and moving forward then we will just do that oh and actually we can actually raise that up a little bit more and then we might get that to clear even better than we did previously and we just load, load that to about there we lower this to about here yeah that works for me and then we've got it in between the guide rails. It, yeah, actually, that's not too bad. And, oh boy, you do not have much room in between the, the track of the train. But for the sim, which isn't going to care, this is good enough. I, I like the look of it. Uh, actually, I like the look of it better than I thought. And you could make the case that it needs some supports. And I would even agree with you on that. So let's see what kind of supports we can find. Uh, always good to have supports in place, uh, both in route building and in life. Uh, that's right, you came to not just the, uh, not just what makes this layout great, but what makes your life great. <laughs> Why not wax a little, try to get a little bit of philosophy in there as well. You, you, you come for the, come for the route building, stay for the, for the feel good, uh, environment. Um, I wouldn't, I like that one, but it's going to some weird places. We might have to go with, uh, Benchwork support. No, <laughs> definitely not using Benchwork supports. Uh, I think this one's, yeah. We'll get this one in for the time being. I think this is a payware one, and thus I won't use it for the final route, but, uh, I feel bad because I'm already doing a lot of, shopping so we'll just get this in there to be like hey we've got a bridge support it looks like a bridge support and then uh, this is an easy thing for me to adjust before the route gets publicly released yeah 
Now, and I, I'm willing to believe that. You can make the case that, oh, that bridge isn't going to be strong enough to support freight cars, but in a sim with no gravity, it will. Hmm. Derpy, got way too little stuff done when compared to how much free time I had this week, and I'm extremely pathetic. You are not pathetic. Man, I really feel like I'm doing this self-help counseling thing tonight. But no, 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 no. We all, you know, we can't beat ourselves up over the things that... Because uh, we're always going to say, there's more I could do, there's more I could do. Believe me, I know that very well. We have to recognize, nope, I, I got stuff done. And sometimes it's just, you need to breathe. And that's totally cool as well. So, I like having that bridge in there. That, that looks nice. Alrighty. Um, now, in terms of geography, uh, and thinking about this in terms of rolling hills. Now, if we look at the plan, you can see that technically it ends right at the edge of this curve. I think that was where the room edge was. Uh, now, yes, it's the sim. We could do what we want. We could build more hills on the side. I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to see how we can work with that as a limitation. I think that's... Sometimes it's good to work with limitations. Um, I would love it if somebody made this in real life. If somebody builds this in real life, or any of the things that you see in the series, please let me know. I'd love to see what you do. Um, I'm thinking maybe... Because this will affect the geography a bit. Let's get the cement plant in there. The the famous, this one building. The one building we're going to have in there. And what is it going to be? It is going to be a cement plant. Um, and we are going to have this be the loader. And we're going to have it go over here. Um, the track plan, I don't think it accounts for a building on this side. But we've got the room for it. Uh, we're going to need to do a little bit more than what it accounts for. Because if you look at the sort of uh, the visualization of this cement plant here, I, it doesn't really account for a building in this spot. Oh, I'm realizing I don't have my cursor on. I'm going to switch that so you guys can actually see what I'm pointing to. Um, okay, so now you can actually see me point to things. So in this area um, is not really anything and i am mindful about overcrowding the scene i don't want it to to dominate too much but that said it does already have five silos so that's pretty big uh b it's sometimes difficult to find buildings that fit into spaces we do have the silos the silos look like that Silos look like this. And you can see they're actually pretty close in size to what had been envisioned for the design. And yes, they do really run up close to the track, but that's that's the way it is. So we're going to kind of work with that. I think, honestly, if we put some kind of chain link fence or something like that, to, it'll add a little bit of a sense of separation. Now, might you have clearance issues in the real world? Yes. But then again, in the real world, you have maybe a little bit more choice. Because, like, a cylinder shape this easy, I mean, it'd be so easy to kick past your own silos. Uh, what program, uh, Thin Red Line Rails, what program do you use to screen record? Um, Ob Studio. OBS Studio. Um, great program. Uh, using it both for live streaming and for... Uh, recording the episodes so it shows five now this is an interesting case it shows five silos we've got four but it kind of pairs them into twos so i think i'm gonna go for less is more and just do four um i think that's what we're gonna stick with because that's already big and, and if we put the scenery back on and then what we're going to do, I'm not quite... Oh, I guess the idea is that these you could actually have over the track, but uh, we're... Or maybe over your trucks, but we're not doing that. We're just going to lower these into the ground so you don't see those holes. Uh, which honestly is kind of worth it anyway, because they're big. 
a pretty big. Uh, looks like we're going to need to adjust this track a little bit to get it to fit under there. Uh, one of the things I'm realizing, and yeah, we're going to make that track change because I feel like then we get to play test it the, the proper way. So another change I'm going to make from how this was originally conceived is that as conceived, you've got the two sidings here. Uh, when we ran it last time, that is a capacity of about eight cement hoppers. The trick is that if you're coming in with eight cars and switching eight cars out, you're going to have to stick cars on the main. Now, if you go down to four cars, then you don't run into that issue. Then you can bring the four empties on this track here and then pick up four loads on this track. Perfect. Except... If you're running in the caboose era, which we are, then you uh, don't have any room to place your caboose. So then you're still placing your caboose on the main, and it defeats the whole purpose of everything we've done. Um, and yeah, you could probably put your empties with your caboose there and then pick up the loads and switch out the caboose, but it makes it needlessly complicated. And honestly, I, I want to do... A little bit of expansion because this is yet another small tweak but increases the operating potential just by one little siding we're gonna add one itsy weetsy siding here uh, how I want to do that I think uh, what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna take this straight piece of track and get the track we're gonna take the straight piece of track and we're gonna make sure it's going through that point, but we're gonna extend it out a bit longer. So both of these are essentially coming in off of curves. So now we're gonna insert a spline point here. Uh, if I can, probably easier if I move this out of the way. Insert the spline point, make sure that that's still registering the straight. Move this back in. And there we go. So that track is back to the way it was. Um, and then this one is going to go off in this direction and go straight. And uh, obviously it's doing all sorts of crazy things with the landscape. That's okay. We're going to leave that for the time being. Now this could be just... Ooh. Doesn't seem to like that. Eh, the sim could be kind of picky about what it lights as far as how you build turnouts and whatnot um so how do we want to change that yeah we'll insert the point a little bit closer back we'll delete this point here uh, we'll make sure that's straight and then we're building this onto the curve this way and let's make sure we're oh it's probably i know what it's probably the yep yeah, there we go okay now the switch. So I'm treating this as a Y switch. Uh, I suppose it could go straight, but I think a Y switch is going to work better for what we want to do, which is we're going to run it to about here. Now, what I don't like about this is it is taking away our... I'm going to have to raise that up a little bit. Oops. Oh, right, because this is on grade. So, wait, that's actually lower. Interesting. Uh, then we'll manually raise it up. Or is it because that is on a... Oh, yep. That's on a different point. Okay, that fixed it. Alright, so... I think I want to do a Y switch because what we're doing is we're adding a caboose pocket and we're also adding a switcher pocket. So when our local comes in, it's not going to have to load the cars manually this is a big enough industry it's going to have its own designated plant switcher but when the local comes in it can put its caboose on the plant switcher track now it is putting us closer to the scenery here which i'm not crazy about but i i look at that as a trade-off and it's it's the type of thing you could look at and say i think you're getting you're putting in too much track there nick i think you should uh I don't think it should have that signing. I, I prefer to have the scene separate. And that's your prerogative, and that's the way it was designed. And, you know, that I, I don't blame you if that's what you're leaning towards. 
for me, it's, I just like the idea of putting one more switch in there to have just that little bit more of operational um, capabilities. Um, we'll get some nice switch stands uh, for that as well, just so that we're not looking at the default switches. Uh, we're gonna want red, white, right, I think, maybe. Um, nope, left. And there. Yep. And we'll, we'll leave it set as is. So now the operational scheme is in between when the local's coming. That plant switcher can now take the empties and manually load each car. Then when the local comes in, it's coming and dropping off its caboose on the, on the plant switcher track dropping off the empties, picking up the loads, picking up the caboose, and getting out of there. Um, and I like that. So, that's what we're going with. And you would just have to, in terms of blocking the cars, well, what if it, this local also has other cars? You'd have to block the cars so that your, your cement cars are at the back. Only way it works. Christopher K, okay, have a switch go into the garage. Um... Good idea, but this is clearly it. And it would work if you were um, if you were doing a you know your own custom buildings. This is clearly a road one. It, it's not going to be high enough. I'll, I'll give you a sneak peek at what we're looking at for plant power. So check this out, and you can see it's just a yeah, well. Uh, I might have the clearance. I mean, the door doesn't function in the sim, but you could always... I don't know. I, that's kind of actually an empty idea. Let's give that a quick try. If we don't like it, we'll just undo it. See, this is why I like, love having you guys along for the ride, is you suggest things and it's like, Hey, I didn't think of that. Let's try that out. Um, now will it? Oh, it probably won't let me... It won't let me move the truck because that's there. Um, this is a G45 ton center cab, courtesy of Control Point Simulations. Which, this whole route is kind of being developed in tandem with because... Oh, that reminds me of something else. Uh, but it, it, this whole route is being developed in tandem with Control Point Sims because their... Um, Sam is the creator of the Commonwealth Railway, and the rolling stock that we're using is available uh, to their private car... Uh, members uh, and you can join the private car the details for that are on their website uh, let's see if I can move this and the 45 ton switcher actually is a freeware model that is available on their website so you can just grab that now and, and have fun with it um, I like it I do so now the remaining question becomes comes will it fit Ooh, it will i like that i mean again obviously the door won't open and close but it fits in there and i kind of like that so good uh, good idea there chris uh you you get a virtual cookie uh I, the only thing i mean you could argue that bend is too tight but then you could also counter argue that you're using a four axle switcher on there and ergo you could afford to have it be that tight um because that is sharp uh obviously you could mitigate that a bit by backing this building up and maybe we'll do that some um hello kevin hey adi glad that you could join us uh let's see Yeah, I mean, I like it. I, I I like it from the standpoint that then it, we don't have that visually cluttering up the 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 side of the the hill. Um, so I do think that's a good idea from that standpoint. And but well, we can actually have the track run all the way through. Maybe that maybe there's a reason for that. Sure, why not? We'll, we'll give it a little bit of extra room 
in the back end, so that way the track actually goes through the back. I like that. Yeah, that's cool. And it still functions for the intended purpose, which is you could get your caboose on off the side there. Uh, if we have a look at the caboose and just make sure that fits tight, but it fits. And you could always push this back a bit. I I'm trying to keep it close enough that you could actually position the four hoppers because now I'm thinking if you were running this in an op session, it's fun to be able to have the individual cars spotted. I think we're going to leave it at that. Maybe my OCD will kick in later and I'll be like, uh, I'm, I'm bothered by how tight that curve is, but I think I can live with that. And I think I like it more than if it was starting to spill out into the rest of things. Because here's where we're going to start to get into some interesting questions. We're going to play around with the geography a bit. And part of these interesting questions are, how do we want to transition from this cement plant to the track? Because we could leave it as it is where it just dips in. And it has kind of a nice visually inviting quality to it. Or we raise the land and we actually create a little bit of a hill. I'm going to try this because my thinking is that it might create a sense of space and distance. And the more... A, uh, especially on a small layout, the more that you can create that sense of separation, oftentimes it's a good thing because um, because then you're able to give this feeling that people are traveling through more scenes and a, a, a nice varied landscape. So this is what it looks like if we put a little bit of a visual barrier in there. And I think what I like about it is obviously you still see the cement plant and you wouldn't want to block access completely um, because of being able to uncouple cars and so forth. You, you want to be able to reach in there. Even if you motorize the turnouts and, and put uncouplers, I think you want to be able to have that access. Um, Gary Waldron, speaking of uh, switches, how do you make the turnout frogs show up? Um, if you're talking about these frogs here uh in the sim uh the answer is that you have to you have to be using a procedural track which means that it it's able to generate uh switch points so if we turn off just a quick demonstration so obviously as i've explained in other streams before uh in this game there aren't physical switches that you're using off of a library you're creating your own switches. Challenging thing is at times you could create a switch of any geometry and the sim will go, yep, looks good to me. However, um, if you're using a procedural track and you keep your curves nice and easy, it will automatically generate the, the frog. So quick demo on that front. All right, so uh, what are you guys thinking on the land separation front? I mean, you could always even maybe make the case that there should be trees separated, but again, we're trying to make the scrub land, so I'm gonna try to avoid that. I'm gonna round this out a bit more. I like how this looks from here. I like how it creates this bowl effect. So I'm gonna stick with this. Uh, I'm liking what that does. So nice and steep, basically as steep as I could get to make it seem like it's a cut while still making some geographic sense. Yeah, I like that. Uh, last, so we've got, and then we've got a little bit here, and I think we, again, we could go track level or we could make it into a bit of a bowl. I want to make this into a, a little bit of a pass because we've got this hill here, it just... I feel like this is going to work best if we turn it into a a pass. This feeling like the hills are continuing beyond the fascia and you're looking down at it, especially because this is end scale. And I'm realizing as I'm saying this that I think that one of the places end scale could succeed is deliberately if you want to create a sense of awe and big scenery as if you were standing on a mountaintop looking at the train. I think, I don't know how often it gets discussed. Usually N-Scale gets discussed in terms of its space-saving qualities, which are real. 
Honestly, building both this and the Kootenai Lake Navigation Company has me seriously considering whether I would build an N-Scale layout, something that I never thought I'd do, but when I look at how much operation you could get in here, boy, it's, it's really nice. Um, so squeezing in operation is the main benefit I see discussed a lot, but I think there's something to be said too for just how it could emulate that sense of wonder when you're looking at big land and you're looking down into scenery. Uh, Matt, is there enough clearance under the bridge for trains on the spur? Good question. Should be, because uh, I think actually where we're testing on the spur, I think the main line even has more. Ooh, that caboose is yeah, tight. Oh, the, so the spur's a little higher. Uh, we can lower that pretty easily, though. Um, so we'll just lower this spline point over here. And that will allow us to... Uh, get the height. Apply the height. Or is it not going to let me do that? Because that bar is connected. Oh, it's because the 45 tonner's there. And now I think it will let me. Yes. Okay. And now if we want to make sure that they are on the same height, then we do this. And actually, we can make it even a bit lower. And that didn't mess up how the switches perform. And now we should be. Ooh, yeah. I mean. Maybe it's not clearing 100%, but again, we can take certain liberties with the sim. Partially because that bridge may not be final, but I am liking it. I am thinking it's probably going to stay as such. Hmm. Um. Ah, a super bird. Uh, switching from HO to N was the best move I ever made for space and options for scenery without feeling compressed so much. And I'm realizing I don't have light on in here. One second. So now I'm really orange. I'm probably going to go and switch that. Um, but while I'm switching that over, is simply to say, yeah, I I could definitely see the space savings being a, a big reason of wanting to... Um, Excuse me. No, I'm not so orange. We'll make that work. Um, of wanting to go in, especially if you're somebody who wants the operations, or maybe you want a coffee table with an end scale layout buried in it. I wouldn't judge. Either is a good reason. Okay. Um... So again, there's not really a lot of room on this edge because this is where the wall is going to be. So we're pretty well gonna leave, the, maybe like a slight curve up, but just not anything super pronounced. Because the wall is basically gonna go right there. That'll end up getting its own backdrop. We'll probably just repurpose the, the pre-existing one for that in some capacity. Um, yeah, so that's most of the geography set now. The last bit of geography to play with here is going to be for these road bridges. We've got a road that, some kind of highway, it appears, it two separate bridges cross over our main line, then it disappears into the hills here, and it's also going to disappear into this forested area here. So... Because this is relying on bridges, that seems like the obvious place to start. And finally, uh, I'm actually clicking on the right asset. Now we can put these bridges into the scene. And we can play around and make sure that the train clears them. You won't have to worry about that here, because this is so much lower. I'm interested to see how this is going to look, putting them close with the... But I kind of like it. It kind of diminishes the scale of the... Oh. Uh, Alco making his regular cameo appearance. I'm going to lift him out of the way so he doesn't knock over the webcam. Everybody say hi to Alco. We love Alco. 
And now he's decided he wants to get back up on the desk. Hopefully he will just wait over there. Um, but yeah, I, I like how it kind of, it shrinks the, the size of the plant because I don't want the, sometimes I, you want your industry to be this giant thing that really sells the idea of power and industry. But here I want this to, I want it to feel isolated. I want it to feel like you're basically in the middle of nowhere, except there just happens to be a cement plant here. And I think having this highway bridge kind of diminishes its visual power in a good way. And you might disagree with that. That's just my initial impression looking at this. I think it's interesting to consider how your surrounding elements will play up or play down others. Whether it be playing up or playing down the existence of the, the railroad, you might be highlighting it, you might be hiding it uh, amongst grand scenery or tons of city buildings. Oh, uh, Wu Alco. Yep, Alco getting some love. Uh, so I think that that's... Now I have it curving down here, but then that does create the problem that I think it's going to get too tall here. I'm even not sure about that. Like, I know this is how it is. Well, let's... First things first. Let's get that caboose under there just to make sure we're... Right around. Okay. So that's much taller than I actually have to clear it. So I can bring that way down. Because I don't want it to be that high over that part of the main line. So let's see if we could do something. Actually, what we'll do is we'll angle it so it's going uphill. So it could continue to go downhill over here, which I like. Not, not that much downhill, but somewhat downhill. Uh, not even that much. Might be easier to look at this from the other side. There we are. Okay. I mean, obviously with roads, you can get away with steeper grades because cars have tires. I like that. I can, I can go for that. I actually like the scene that this creates as well. This isn't one you'd be able to observe in the context of how the layout was originally designed. But if you, if you didn't have a wall here... If you could, if people could look at this side of the layout, that's actually a neat scene. I might cheat and leave, take the wall off of this side just for the sake of... I'll keep the fascia there. I like the idea of being able to encourage people to view it from this side. Because I think this will be a cool scene in its own right. The searchlights underneath the bridge. And yeah, that's kind of nifty. Obviously, this bridge is kind of helping to distract us from the fact that this backdrop ends here. Now, if you didn't have the cement plant, you could probably play with having the backdrop continue all the way across the back, and then, but then you get into questions of how the track appears and the road plays with the backdrop. Certainly something you could experiment, but we're, we're leaving that alone for this. We're, we're going to leave it. Uh, Phoenix, uh, uh, will the root have Easter eggs? Uh. We'll see. Depends on if I'm inspired. Like, uh, you know, maybe I, I'm thinking maybe like a little camp scene or something like that. Uh, maybe we'll we'll hide a. Oh, I, I know what I want to hide, but we'll save that for later. But but we'll put that in before we uh, switch to playtime. Okay, so we've got this in place. Um, now we're gonna look up the yarn roads. Why are they called yarn? Uh, because the person who designed them really liked to crochet. Uh, just kidding. Uh, yarn stands for yet another road network, I think it was. Somebody explained it to me on one of the recent streams. Um, that's what we're going for. I don't know. Maybe the person who designed it liked crocheting too. I don't, I don't know. My wife crochets. Well, it looks like we are going to need to adjourn for a quick break, but we will be back in a moment.
And we're back. Thank you for sticking with us there. And now, back to this highway. So the good thing with the highway is that it won't be a terribly hard thing to hide because we've got this uh, we've got this hill anyway. So it's just a case of sculpting the hill and uh, sculpting the hill in such a way my cat walked on the keyboard. Sorry about that. And it, that it, there's enough to give it a, a disappearing point. So now we'll do an alignment along the line for this. Uh, there we are. Uh, and actually we can lower that a bit more. And then readjust the train. Uh, even more. It's still a bit steep. And it can, from this point, be actually going down a little bit. Like it crests right after the bridge and then it just disappears from that point. Let's just make this easy. That is 12.7 meters. So we're adjusting to that height. And now we're smoothing to the spline there. And there we go. And now we can mess with the rain to get that to blend a little bit more. Just to make sure it has a nice shape with the landscape. That looks good. Hope you guys are enjoying this, as always. I welcome your your feedback, your uh, constructive criticism, your constructive construction criticism, whether it be on the root building or just on the episodes in general. Love to know your thoughts on, on what you thought of uh, the first two episodes we produced so far, the, the live streams, all that kind of good stuff, because... You guys are the reason I'm doing this, and so I want to make sure that I'm providing good, insightful commentary and the kinds of stuff you want to see. So I like that. I'm going to put a little bit of a crash barrier in here, I think. I don't know if it, the DOT code would require one or not, but it's one of those nice little visual... Um, I think, yeah, guardrail. A nice little visual touch that just gives it a little bit of character uh, not that kind of guardrail this kind of guardrail yeah there we go that's what I'm talking about get that lined right up to about there we'll raise the height on it a wee bit uh, to about I guess it should probably come to about here it should technically be off the curb and we'll just to about there and then it disappears off to the side just that little bit extra something, which I like. We'll bring the road back a little bit to hide the transition between the, the road and the bridge. I like that bridge model so much. It's got, it looks like um, there's a model maker, uh, HO scale, maybe they do one for N, that does a concrete road bridge kit. And I've seen it on so many layouts. I have it, I have it, uh, I've built it. I haven't put it on my layout but it looks just like that. So it's a nice asset to have for that reason. Now this will be interesting. You know, I'm actually wondering, so it shows it as two separate, uh, the plan shows this as two separate bridges. Uh, does it show just two separate bridges? Yeah, it kind of shows there's two separate bridges there. But I think we might just make it into one big one because trying to get the geography to line up right here is more trouble than it's worth. Okay, we're going to make this one solid bridge. Uh, because I think that's just going to be easier. <laughs> Not those guardrails. Uh... Oh, cancel. Um, 
Oh, come on. Sometimes Trains comes up with the darndest of errors to have issues with. Uh, so we, yeah, so I guess that was about right. Now we should be able to attach this to that. There, we'll lower it a bit down. I don't want it to look too crooked, but I think just a little bit of, yeah, I like how it slopes down like that. And then we'll get this road to connect with the bridge here. Uh, road into a tunnel. Could if this was a mountain, which it could be. Um, I, I, I'd rather put it into, uh, I'd rather just have it kind of disappear like this one did, um, cause a tunnel feels very like, steep mountain, so I'd be okay with doing that for, for this part of the layout, but over here I'm trying to sell that it would just disappear, even if I might have to do some trees. Uh, let's see if I can landscape that in such a way that it's a believable Because it doesn't have to totally cover it just enough to give it a kind of dipping out point And we'll get the height line it with this and then Lower this down Uh Rick's Products Bridges. Not familiar with those. Are those on the download station? The rich, uh, or do you, like, if I just have to search RAX? Um, oh, oh, you're talking about the real ones. Uh, right, that I was talking about earlier. Um, could be. I'd have to look at the kit, because I forget. Uh, yeah, I'm willing to let, leave that be for the time being. Um, maybe I'll, I'll do a few trees here, because this is a distant hill anyway, so maybe it's just this foreground that's kind of the scrub land, but there's still trees in the backdrop. I think we'll get a better sense of that shortly. Um, I'll get this all raised up. And this could go up, like, keep going up high because we don't have a backdrop for this part. Uh, so in a way, it's kind of good to have something scenically to be like, hey, there's mountains. They go way beyond what you see here. And that keeps it pretty parallel with where the layout ends. So, I And I'm not overly concerned with this section here because... The eyes should be focused on the cement plant here. I, I think it's one of those cases where people are staring at where the road disappears is probably not doing it quite right. Especially if you're looking here, you've got that bridge coming into the scene and so forth. Um, looks like we'll wanna, I wanna make this a little more steep and going right into the scene here. A bit. Uh, let's play with that. Uh, yeah, okay. And then we'll just smooth out that transition. Hope you guys appreciate 90s rock. I, I'm trying to make these playlists centered around things that uh, thematically fit with uh, what we've got going on in the live stream. Uh, it's a very U2 vibe to it, this song. I'm also a musician, so for me, music and trains go together like uh, peanut butter and jelly. I was looking for a more exciting 
simile than that, but I'll take that in a pinch. Any of you guys musicians? Any of you guys play anything uh, instrument-wise? I, uh, I play accordion. Although I have also played trombone. But these days I'm mainly playing accordion. Water tower time. Okay, this is going to need some supports as well to look a little bit more um, robust. And I feel like we'll want to support in the center of it as well. So let's see uh, what we can find as far as the kind of bridge supports. Oh, this is the kind of bridge support. <sighs> Again, I think that's a payware one, so I'm going to try to avoid that one if I can. Though it is nice, but let's see if we can go with something else. Um... Well, that's kind of an interesting one. It's a bit uh, undersized for what we need to... Oh, now this this is what we need. Okay, here we go. Uh, although this is a bit wide. So now, brief shopping trip to see. Can I find... Uh... Oh, that'll work. Yep, that's exactly what I wanted. And just like that, boom. World's fastest trip to a hobby store. Uh, going to the download station to download bits I need. Oh, I need this random doohickey. Okay, can I find it? It's always a great day when the answer to that question is yes. And now we can have a nice bridge support. Yep. Mm -hmm. That is what I am talking about. Now we'll place one here. We'll place this one on an angle. Because I think that'll look okay. Eh, it looks look better straight. And one more here. Uh, White Star Violin just had a concert yesterday. Well, hope that concert went well for you. Violin's a very nice instrument. to play in a band with a fiddle. A lot of fun. We'll get it to about that height. Which probably means I should also get this one to this height. And this one to about this height. And... I'm happy with that. That looks good. And it does help to distract from the fact that, yes, technically you've got this mountain that just choppy chops in the middle. But I don't think that's... I, I mean, you. as I say, you could do something where you'd have the background parallel the road, so you're using the road as the transition point between your backdrop and your, your layout. Um, and then just have holes cut into the bottom. And maybe I'll do that in between uh, edits. Maybe I, I'll create an extension to this that does actually parallel the road. Um... But now that I have the road in there and I can see it, it makes it so much easier to do that. Uh, and RW, uh, uh, Superbird plays guitar, very nice. Uh, Rudy plays guitar. Uh, Rudy says he thinks that uh, the PJ, PB and J comment should probably just give that and trains up and find new hobbies. Uh, I, I hope it wasn't that bad. Anyway. So, uh, let's get into some landscaping now, in terms of terrain textures. Going for kind of grasslands feel, and we're going to lay down the grass because nature was here before all of us, so having the grass in place first makes sense, and then we'll layer stuff on top of that in terms of ballast and whatnot. But looking for something that kind of has a burnt grass feel a bit. Um, I like this, but it's too rocky. That's gonna be like a highlight texture, I think. That may be a bit too burnt. I'm not sure, I like it as a texture, 
Um, I think it might be partially that it's a seasonal thing too. Let me just make sure we're in the right season to be able to... No, we're in July. Okay. Um, or do I want to go with something like... No, that's too wet. And I used that over on the other side. I want to differentiate the two. Um, let's do a quick trick to the virtual hobby store. Uh, I'm going to download a few and see if I find something that is maybe the more the right level of burnt for what I'm looking for. That'll take a couple of minutes because um, those are a bit heavier. But for now, we'll just use this. We're going to turn off base maps. Um, that's going to transition back. So we're basically just focusing on this third of the layout uh, from the bridge to the wall or to the edge fascia. So that'll be our kind of base layer. Now we're going to do highlighty, highlighty bits. Highlighty bits, also known as highlights. Yes. And now we're going to, yes. Ah, see, that has the right kind of look to it. And we're just going to kind of, see, if you go too big, it already looks like a, a pattern. So I find that using this kind of random crazy brush stroke effect works best as far as these things are concerned. Kevin did trumpet through public school. Fellow brass musician, love it. Uh, let's see, that's 13A, 14. Oh, I like that, I like that. We'll, we'll throw a bit of that one in there too. I mean, we're probably going to use 3D grass. We'll use the the, the turf X because I like that stuff a lot. And I feel like we've got some nice wide open spaces to work with here to make it worthwhile. Um, so we'll do that shortly. But this is a good kind of base layer of things. I just want to get... Uh, enough of that out that it has some nice color to it and I'm gonna download a couple more of these grass textures because it's nice to have options ballast uh, now ballast I do think I want to be fairly consistent on um, maybe that might even change so here basically we just went to this kind of dirt let's let's see what that looks like over here we might end up Varying that a bit for this part of things as well. Actually, I like that. That works for me. Okay, so we'll use this as our ballast color again for this part of the track. And for this section, we're going to keep it nice and wide like that because there's less trees and things to, um, to wreak havoc with it. Um, it should keep its form a bit better. I like that it just it gives a little bit of color variety. So it just gives a sense that it's dozens of miles away from from the forested areas. Uh, shouldn't it be more green? Maybe? Um, I mean, I agree this is maybe a bit too pink. Um, Let's see if we can find something that takes it a bit more green. I just don't want it to look too wet. Because this is more like... The, it, like it's, it's shielded from the rain because the mountains are so tall that it just doesn't get as much rain. So that's... I'm sure there's a term for that kind of thing. Ooh, I like this. That might be a good one to have around this base here. With the pebbles. Because you figure the rocks would kind of tumble down, so I like that. Well, that doesn't fit here, but I like it. Amazing what you could discover you like just by kind of messing around. See, I feel like that's a little too bright. Although it's a highlight color, I don't know that I mind it, but I think I'm going to have to work with some other highlight colors. Actually, yeah. 
Tell me what you think. Tell me if you think this is getting it a little bit more green. Because, again, I don't necessarily disagree with you that it was a bit too brown before. But I just I want to do something a little bit more... Because I, I tend to go for super green and super lush uh, in my root building efforts. So I, part of it is just trying to vary the nature of what I do. I think that's a bit better. And also, once we place uh, moist, needs to look more moist, extra moist. You guys really want it to go green. Okay, well, we'll take it a little farther in that direction. Um, we'll take it a little more in that direction. I, I can go that. And I think this is different from what we had. No, oh, that looks about the same. No, I guess that is different. Alright. So we're going even darker. You guys are, are, are you, you want it nice and moist so we are going to do the best we can on that front actually that berm is going to be a good place for some rocks we'll, we'll play around with that okay hopefully okay yeah i'm seeing uh, now i'm seeing you guys saying looking better with the green light highlight so all right then we will stick with that let us add some turf x in here um one of the trickier things in this sim is getting the turf X to work right. It's also kind of grid based, but fortunately there's some presets so we can just go with some uh, grass. I'm gonna say some grass medium one. Yeah, we'll go with grass medium one. And then we switch to, uh, oh, that reminds me, I should save, because I haven't saved in an hour and a half of group building. Not a good idea. So now we have saved. That is a very good idea. Uh, so grass, we have to increase it to a certain size to get it to work. We'll turn up this. And then we're just going to add a lot of it, because this is going to be grasslandy type. So now when you get close, it has the nice fuzzy wuzzy look about it. And I like that fuzzy wuzzy look. I think that's good. And even from, a, you don't see it in quite as much detail, but it just gives the sense that there's some texture there. It, it's difficult to do it close to track. So we kind of, so as much as I want to do it through here, like you see, it's also going to spill off the side of the layout into the into where we put our dig holes, so that's not going to quite work. So we're going to need to be sparing with it, but we can use it in certain places. Um, the grass splines look better, and we'll experiment with that in a moment, because actually we might end up going that route. They have their trade-offs. Um... but they do kind of tend to look pretty nice, especially from distance. So this is the kind of comparison. So you can see with the grass blinds, like you, you occasionally get some shadow issues with them, that kind of flickering. But the advantage to these is that you can place them along these tight areas where you can't get away with placing the turf X. So, kind of a matter of trade-offs. We'll, we'll place it along this edge. Uh, just so that that way, when you're looking at the bridge, you've got something to look at. Actually, I think there's another one of these that maybe doesn't have quite this level of difficulty with the flashing. Uh, I don't know. This looks better. It's a bit thinner, so we'd have to use more of them. And I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm kind of comfortable with it based on just how the ground spines look. I'm going to need to smooth this out a little bit since it's not supposed to be rocky scenery. I uh, want to get it a 
little smoother. So now we switch back to ground, turn the sensitive view way down because we're not trying to move mountains here. Moving mountains. I thought that was creative. Hopefully you agree. We're, we're not moving mountains, we're just moving a, a little itty bitty hill. I'm just going to make it a little less pointy. A little less like a hedgehog. I can get... I, I could be good with that. I think that'll... That's good. That'll do for now. Uh, Kevin, why don't you have the dig holes yet? I like to separate... To uh, save dig holes for last, to me. Um, that way, then it's kind of like the finishing touch. It's like I'm coming down the home stretch... Uh, also, truth be told, dig holes uh, are a really good time for me to watch YouTube videos because I don't have to focus that heavily on what I'm doing. I'm just laying tile after tile. Stuff like this, I need to concentrate a bit more. Um, so, this is basically the scene. Uh, what do you guys think? I... I Oh, well, let's, let's do a little bit more down here. I, I want to, yeah, I do want to put a little bit more, oh, yeah, and rock. But I do want to know your thoughts nonetheless, even though I'm realizing, okay, there's a couple of things I want to tweak with this, but, um, but still want to know what you think. Uh, now, now, of course, I won't be able to find that, uh, nice rocky ground. That I was looking for earlier because now I'm looking specifically for that one uh we'll use the PBR city dirt I suppose uh, yep yeah just maybe like a couple of dashes of it because it is kind of super green but if we do it in a couple places then it's it's a nice visual highlight something that attracts the eye and keeps it varied Again, something that I think crosses over between model rarity and and this uh, the sim is varying your color and how you use your color to create a scene. As you guys said, with more moisture, we want more moisture. Um, so let's see if this is what I want. Yep, this is what I want to use for the plant. Uh, we're going to get a base layer of stone down, and then we're going to refine it from there. I also want to put up a chain link fence. I feel like, yeah, this is out in the middle of nowhere, so it's not like security be a massive issue for them. But I I've, I've seen plenty of places that still have them, even though I don't think security would be too much of an issue for where they're at. Um, plus, then I think it just helps to visually separate uh, these silos from the main line. And it's another thing to look at. Especially because we're doing a scene here that's very much... You don't have a lot of trees. There's not a lot of um, visual stimulation. Like, you, 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 you can take in this scene a lot more quickly than you can take in this scene, especially once we add foreground details to that siding. Uh, which hopefully we'll get like a base layer of that done. Again, 9 o'clock is about playtime, but maybe we'll cut into playtime a bit just because I'd like to get that done if possible. If we could at least get base ground level layers and then I'll fine tweak it later just so that we're not looking at um, grid. Uh, right, so fence. So, chain link, let's see. Chain link security fence is exactly what we want. Ah, yeah. Yeah, that's the stuff. I mean, that's maybe a little intense chain link fence. I was thinking, like, not the whole barbed wire thing. Yeah, something like this. I think that'll be sufficient. Uh, and we're basically just going to wrap it around the building here. And let's see if we can keep it in a straight line. Oh, just barely, but close enough. I mean, it's not like people have to walk around that side of the tanks. We could keep it pretty close. 
I might have to raise this up because it looks a little weird having that fence sink down. This is where having the, the spline points conform to the terrain is actually to the benefit when it comes to placing these grass blinds and so forth because then everything just uh, contours really nicely. Um, so I'm thinking gate here, which means that the fence will need to follow the track. So we'll keep the that straight and then go along here. How do I like that? And eh, no, it, it makes the fence too big. Uh, I mean, it does then get into the issue of, well, you'd have to leave that all open along there. But do I mind that? Maybe I don't mind that. Because sometimes what works on a layout doesn't logically work in the real world, but it just looks better on the layout. And you can still make the case that, like, if people want to get inside, they're they're having to get really close to the building, and that there's still some benefit to the fence. Even just that layer of it, even just having the fence go right up to the track, so I could get behind. But I do think maybe we'll put the fence over this side. I'm also mindful that the trucks have to get in here somehow. And again, then you get into logic questions of well, where are the trucks unloading and. I don't think we have room. Okay, no. Hi, Alco. I don't think we have room for that. No, I don't think we have room for that, eh, Alco? I don't think we have room to worry about logistically how the trucks get in and out. I mean, technically, you could put a dirt road, crosses here, and goes into that. Um, I do think we should have a dirt road. Uh, partially because then it's a grade crossing, and... This railroad actually doesn't have any grade crossings. So there is something to be said uh, for having something in the way of a... Uh, that's a two-lane. Uh, this JR Dirt Road is... No, I want gray. Something like this. I mean... Unfortunately, 19 plays havoc with some of the shadows, and I don't like that visually. Uh, I'm just going to make it out of a texture, I, given the complex geography of the thing. I think that's just going to be easier. So, not, not perfect, not clean edges, but for the sake of um, just making sure that it works and it doesn't cause visual bugs in the sim... We're going that route. And then we'll raise it over the track height so that it... I like that. Um, I think I might vary this a little. So now comes the part of the show where we don't want to have all of the PBR city looking the same. So we're going to vary that a bit. Oh yeah, like that's neat. And actually this feels really, this feels like a texture you would see a lot of. And what do we have going on here? We have a mixture of PBR and non-PBR not playing along super nice, so we're gonna spill that over a bit. And looks like also we've got floating tracks, so we're gonna fix that. Uh, just by getting the height of the terrain here and then applying that. Hopefully it won't mess up things for the track below. And it does, but if we replace that siding with the terrain version of the track, which we have over here, then that won't be an issue. So straighten it, get the track height, apply the track height, and now when we put it over here, we can see that it, it, its ballast actually extends down, so it's good. We're going to place some haze bumpers. Uh, we'll make them rusty, because that feels nice and industrial. Adds a little bit of color variety to things. Get the placement right. Yeah, I like that. Um, and then we'll place these here. 
which makes that maybe too short to bring the engine out, so we'll extend that a wee bit. But there we go. I'm liking how this looks as a scene in and of itself. Like, if you could position a camera back here for building the actual layout, I think then you'd be in shape to have some other neat hidden scenes. Uh, conveyor belt over the tracks to truck loaded facility on edge of the table. Um, yeah, I mean, you could even make the case that it's, yeah, it could go over to the side. I'm just going to leave the dirt road for now. If, if it bothers me enough, I'll, I'll switch it out later. Um, actually, I want, I want this to be a private crossing. So I've made a crossing only to make it a private crossing, ergo ones that, um, trains wouldn't necessarily blow their horns for, um, but it just feels more like what would happen because this is obviously not a public road. But, you know, the, the two points. One, you could change that to public. Uh, two, there is going to be a road over here. It's treated as an access road, so I am not putting a crossing. But this, obviously, this would be a perfect place if you wanted to have a road come in, cross down, and then disappear behind the trees there. You could get away with that. Um, oh, right. Detail, scene, uh, detail that I wanted to show you guys um, while I'm looking at this. And then we'll get that um, siding in place because I do want to make... I do want to get the I want to get the ground textures done so that for playtime today we have the ground textures done. Maybe not everything will be a hundred percent up to snuff as far as scenery, but we'll get close enough that it's not distracting if it's off. So if you're doing a fictional railroad, I mean even if you're doing a real railroad, but especially if you're doing a fictional railroad, it's great to use your company's logo throughout the landscape, presuming your company has enough money that they would be placing their logo places other than on their rolling stock, because obviously of rare roads that don't. But uh, the reason I'm suggesting this is because we've got this nice little Commonwealth Railway logo that we can apply to this bridge here. And it's just a small visual touch, but it helps to emphasize the idea that this is a railroad and it's influencing the landscape in which it's operating in. And you could do that. I mean, yes, we're talking end scale. So it is teeny tiny. And maybe you wouldn't want to choose to for something like this. But the more that you can place your logo in locations, um, the more that it's... Uh, the more invisible it is, I think the more it gives your railroad this sense of authenticity, the sense that it, it is impacted the landscape and the businesses and so forth around it. Um, we're actually going to do... My goal is to do a little bit of that with the cement plant before releasing the route. So, still looking for names for this cement plant. Uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching this on repeat. Presuming that I haven't released the route yet, but still, leave your, your name suggestions because uh, we can do it just as easily. Uh, and especially for this, four, I want to make a version of this 45 tonner, um, have a, a version reskinned that has the company name or some reporting marks on it for, um, for whatever this cement company is. Um, let's place a vehicle here. It's going to seem a little bit too empty to my way of thinking if we don't have some kind of truck. Or some kind of vehicle. So let's look up pickups. Um, oh yeah, this will totally blend in here. I mean, not gonna lie, that's a nice Ford Model 8 pickup. But uh, I think we need something a little bit more modern than that. We need something a little bit more, even more than 1950s. Uh, let's see what I've got on the Ford front. Sorry, uh, I know pickup trucks are very controversial in terms of what one selects. So uh, I'm, I'm sensitive to that. Uh, I'm not, uh, by, by selecting a, a Ford pickup truck or whatever I'm selecting, I am not 
endorsing said pickup truck. You know, I don't want to uh, trigger the legions of fans of, of that particular brand. Eh, no, that's too old. Um, You can tell that I like modeling my transition era stuff by the fact that that's what I have in my vehicles. Um, I don't want that van because that's more of a residential area van. Uh, let's see what I have that's 1970s. Uh, not a lot, apparently, in terms of vehicles. Uh, 1980s, maybe I got something. Uh, a Ford Escort. Porsche. Well, that would certainly have a visual statement. Eh, not exactly what it was going for. Um, let's see about a something semi. Um, or, silly me, uh, I don't know, some kind of dump truck, maybe? Uh, HP Pickup 01, let's see if I have that. I do have that. Uh, I mean, it's maybe a bit old. But if we kind of turn it away so that we're not emphasizing its age, then that could be okay. Because at this stage, it's like, okay, it could be kind of whatever pickup truck. Are you really only going to notice it if you're staring at it this way? We'll let it ride for now. We might change that later, but good enough for now. I want to get this ground textured. So, uh, last look, uh, hopefully last look at the kind of the major detailing elements of uh, what we have modeled here. Oh, and I suppose we should give a little bit of a sense of what we're gonna do for backdrop there. So we could just do more mountains and have this same backdrop and say, hey, here's a, here's the part two of that and just line it up like so. And it would go like this which could be done, um, but I think we may just go with regular blue backdrop as well. You, could, you guys could tell me if you think that it's too distracting to see the different heights. Uh, not locking that in stone, but I actually kind of dig it from a standpoint, like yes, it, it, this wall is just, this edge is going to be distracting no matter what. That's kind of unavoidable. But if we... If you're looking at just what's going on here, it actually... I think that works okay. So we're going to leave it like that. Because we've got some work to do here. This is basically just texturing. Um, but let's get the road placed while it's easier to look at the ground. So we're going to turn on the base map to just see. So there... The track plan has this access road clearly just some dirt road that comes into the scene and then disappears as soon as you get into the, the trees so i think that's what we're going to try to emulate here we'll see how well it works for us um so jr dirt because it was kind of giving us grief over there uh definitely not asphalt this is going to be backwoodsy. And it looks okay there. It, I think the main issue with it before was having it interacted with the PBR textures. And admittedly, that is a tricky thing to balance. We'll go for it like that. I mean, dirt roads could be tight. And also, the goal is just to dip it out of the way and get it hidden. Like, yes, if you're here, you'll notice that it's just hanging there, but you would never be looking at your layout like this. Um, so I think that's an acceptable kind of trade-off. We'll just get this leveled so that it doesn't look too weird when looking at it from the train. But I think that's good. Now, 
Same thing as what we did over here. We're gonna get our base layer in. I think this time we're gonna use the dark green as the base layer and then we'll, uh, we'll layer things on top of that. Cause this is kind of a transitional scene and I like to try experimenting with different color palettes as well. Just at the end, trying to make sure they all make at least some degree of sense with each other. But I think that's a decent base color, and then we can kind of mix the forest browns into it. Whereas with the forest browns, it's more like we're mixing the greens into it, especially along the edges. Actually, I like that. I'm going to do that. Yep. Oh, yeah, that, that looks better already. Now it's super green. But not for long. We're going to add some dead grass and so forth around these pillars because they don't get as much light. And it's good to kind of blend them in color-wise with the terrain around them. So we're getting that. Um, we're going to add some as a sort of boundary effect, I think, to the track. Uh, HP US car series. It's good to know. Uh, want to do 24 hour multiplayer trains with the Z, uh, thing. I wish you luck with making that work. I, uh, train Z does have some multiplayer capabilities. I've never. I tried a little bit of their multiplayer route scenario builder. It was honestly buggy. I wasn't super impressed with it. It, um, it limits you. And I know that with the multiplayer itself, it limits you to being able to use just uh, download station assets, which is okay with certain, uh, certain routes and certain... Uh, railroads that you'd want to model but that said I'm thinking about how um, so something like this which would be a super fun kind of um, multiplayer session the, the rolling stock for it is Commonwealth Railway which is obviously third party and it's kind of a it's a, it's a disappointment to me that there isn't some way to do multiplayer with third-party assets because I think that would just be the coolest thing to have that. Because um, honestly, some of these routes I'm building, it would be so nifty to do multiplayer sessions. And I, I would like to experiment with doing uh, what I guess you could call fake multiplayer sessions, which is where everybody's playing... The game on their own and you just you pretend you could see other trains um and that wouldn't be bad but oh wow that looked very different but actually that'll blend really nicely with this dirt road so it doesn't look as out of place it says forest and i guess that kind of has foresty elements but um so this access road kind of opens out to here. I keep thinking there needs to be an MOW truck. And there again, too, MOW truck with the logo on it would be a nice touch. Uh, what kind of MOW stuff do I have? Let's see. Mow, mow, mow your boat. Uh, oh, we do actually have MOW kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. like that. I mean, that's not technically high rail. Uh, this is. That's maybe a bit more modern than what I'm looking for. Um, this is not modern enough. Um, a man mowing. Not quite the mowing I had in mind. Uh, okay, yeah, I can go with this. I, well, and maybe that was the same as the CS truck, the CSX truck, but... No, I don't know. This one doesn't look quite as old. Or looks older i mean and it's also labeled for bn so probably have to make a commonwealth railway version of that but it just this this scene looks like it needs something along those lines 
Okay, ballast time. Uh, going with the crushed stone that we've been using fairly consistently throughout this. Uh, just to get that layered in there. And actually, realizing I didn't apply that to... Or maybe I did apply it, but no, I don't think I applied it to that. There we go. That looks nice. They're now coming through here. Now, I want to give a sense of elevation to these tracks. Right now, they feel a little bit too just like they're sitting on the ground. So, how do I want to do that? Um, I might replace them with the terrain version, but I think for starters, we're just going to lower the terrain around them a wee bit. We can lower the corner, because if we lower the edges a bit, that will help. Which makes sense, because you'd want to have runoff for, for rainwater and so forth. And already that's helpful. Sometimes you see visual glitches because of the way the PBR works in this sim, and that's unfortunate, but not always totally avoidable. You can kind of refine it when looking in here. Um, I like that. That's that's getting more along the lines of, of what I have in mind. And then same along here, we want to create a little bit more of a sense of that it's raised. We'll probably also make that a bit more rocky. Careful around the truck so that it doesn't end up having to sit on uneven terrain because getting that to look right is a little tricky. Um, but I think that's... Uh, yeah, it needs a little bit more elevation. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the whole thing and we're just going to gently kind of lower it like such. And if it bottoms out, that's when we'll that's when we'll employ the other type of track. But I think that just helps. Oop, some of the track is sinking because it probably didn't get set to the height of zero. gradient or apply vertex height. apply vertex height there we go and now that's it switch isn't sinking into the ground and that already looks much better i think that's enough elevation i don't know if i have to employ the the other style of track here because already now it looks a little bit more robust and we'll lower this too because i think that helps to give this sense of that the land was raised when the track was originally built. And I want some more browns. I think it's it's a bit... You can make the case that maybe this is a bit too brown, but I think this is still a bit too green. Especially because some of those brown patterns are very repeat friendly, so that it looks like they're repeating over and over. Um, see what we can borrow from here that pbr grass texture 11 so that it's kind of a brown but it's also kind of a grass so i like that which i like oh yeah that's what i want around here and even along this edge because this edge looks too neat and tidy so we'll get some of that we'll get some of the stones that we have from here How's Kootenai coming along? Uh, I mean, it's pretty much done. It has a couple of assets needing to be finalized for it. Uh, and then that'll be released on the download station. Now we can get a little bit more of the green in here, which I like. Now it's not so burnt out. I think also probably I need some more trees in here. This, this feels a little thin. I, I mean, it's a trade-off, so... On the one hand, I want more trees to make it look thicker, but I also want to be able to see the train. So I think it's more about having um, shorter trees. So if we go to the Erst category, the Erst category has some shorter trees. And I think that if we place some of those around, they won't be 
super dominating of the landscape, but then also just give a little bit more of a sense of... Yeah, I need some more rock, too. Uh, PR rock. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that kind of soil for here as well. I think that's good. And then also probably a bit down here because we've got some bridges and that just feels like the kind of thing you'd see around these bridges. So, uh, let's put, I'm going to put a grass spline along this edge uh, because that I think it'll just give it a little bit more, uh, I don't know, it's maybe too light green and maybe too perfect in its edge, but then again that maybe helps to emphasize the height elevation. There's no magic, no magic bullet unfortunately in terms of having a, a sort of one size fits all solution when it comes to this kind of stuff. This face is also riding up a bit high, too. So we'll, we'll, especially once the dig holes come in, I'll be manually adjusting the fascia height. Um, uh, I could kind of go with that. I like this for this part, especially where it contrasts against the, the fascia backdrop. I think that's good. Let's see, we're getting close to play time. Um. But I think, yeah, I want some of this lighter stuff in, in around the tracks here. Um, so while we're uh, finishing up here, uh, time to vote. Uh, are we running uh, EMD or? Well, actually, no. We're we are running EMD because I've got some some more new toys to to show on that front too. Ooh, that looks nice. Yeah, that, that's the final polish that that put, they needed there to look good. You could make the case it even needs it here. Because I like these kind of twigs and things that end up existing. Yeah. Alright, so what do you guys think uh, in terms of what we're looking at here? Um, I mean, there's probably some micro detailing to be done. I'm looking at this area thinking, oh yeah, this needs to be done. Uh, staging really hasn't been touched much at all, so that's going to get a whole lot of attention off camera, but uh, that's basically just going to be a lot of messing around um, with uh, trying to find an asset that works as far as the uh, making this bridge look layouty for lack of a better word, because we don't need a lot of... We don't want a bridge with a lot of overhang because it has to clear the tracks over here. So it really should look pretty, like, boring because you wouldn't be detailing that so much. So we're just going to leave it as grid for now, but that will uh, likely change in the final result. I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I think we'll leave it as is for um, for now. I think that I might end up doing some more stuff with it between now and when it ends up being released. Uh, certainly doing some more branding around this uh, cement plant to get a little bit more character. I think that's going to do it for now. Uh, I'm going to leave you guys uh, to take this in. Uh, I will be back in a few moments after a quick break, and we'll uh, we'll do some operations. Stay tuned.
And we're back. So now it's time to play with some trains. So we have some of our trains from last time. Uh, ignore the fact that the engines are facing the wrong way. That's just a visual glitch. We've got our coal drag with our MLWs. And we've got uh, these uh, beautiful SD40-2Fs, aka Barnes. All of these units are from Control Point Simulations. You can check out their work at controlpointsimulations.com. Um, and we also have SD9s, which make for great helpers as well as great local units. So what we're going to do is uh, I want to play test the cement plant. I also want to show you a new toy that we've got. Uh, and we're going to put that new toy on this merchandise train here. So we're going to leave uh, we're going to leave one of the barns in place, but I want to show you guys uh, something that was sent to me this past week, and that is these. Which are uh, Commonwealth SD40-2s. And they look pretty sharp. This is actually my first time playing with these. I really haven't done much with them up to this point. So I'm thinking we'll take a nice jaunt around the layout once with this. And then we'll have some fun with the cement plant with the 45 tonner and the SD9. Um, so let's go for a ride, shall we? Oh, I forgot about these two guys that I left parked on the main line for, for photo reasons. It's like the Sim said, it's like the Sim knew what I was going to do and said, uh, you might not want to do that. Oh, and look at the, you can see the semaphore functioning. It seems to be a little confused. Um... You ever thought about doing the Bay Junction standalone layout from Model Railroader? The name sounds familiar. I, I can't conjure up what it actually looks like at this stage. So maybe, but I'm not sure what it looks like. So um, I'll have to Google search that one later. Okay, we're gonna set this one to drive on its own. And this one, um, it's going to get there after we do. These signals from Jointed Rail, love them. We've got the whole thing set up to work properly as far as showing uh, approaching routes um, to show the correct indications. Okay, let's get underway here. And we're going to see, I think I might have to go back into the... Uh, so like the other ones, it looks like everything is, oh, that was one of the things that I discovered when I was briefly looking at this earlier. Uh, you can open all the hood doors on this engine to actually look at the prime mover inside. If, if that isn't cool, I, I don't know what is. That is super neat. So if you want to simulate doing a startup sequence and actually opening the, the hood doors, um, you can do that. Class lights, front, uh, we're gonna go for a white marker, and we've got it, okay. And on, we under, underway, on our way. We're gonna go. Switches set. We don't. Okay, now we do. And you can see the switch. The signal is changing to a clear for us. Uh, and we're gonna change to. Uh, so right now we're set to uh, an approach, but yeah, it's gonna become a medium approach. Well, I think of that as a divergent approach because uh, we're gonna go in the hole in the siding.
And I'll turn down the music a little bit so we can actually hear the engine more clearly. Ooh, ditch lights work, that's nice. Oh, that looks so nice, having that S-curve. And you figured that could have been straight, but having the curves gives this sense of length. It actually does give you more uh, train that you could fit into a space by maybe a car length or two, but still, that just looks so cool. And then here we are going around the, the super elevated causeway. And that just looks so nice. I mean, that just, that is, that's magazine cover material right there. Then we disappear into the, into the forest. And then the train will reappear on the grade. Meanwhile, what's the coal train? Oh, it must have already cleared there. It must be uh, behind the fascia already. But we can take a moment to admire this. Oh, that is such a neat scene. This layout's really impressed me. This is one, going in, I was excited about. I knew that it would be good. But now that I'm actually seeing it play out, I I'm really happy with it. Oh, that coal train made really good time. I guess we'll have a rolling meet then. And it really separate. I love how the foreground and the background separate so well. Because if you're looking at the foreground, you're not really paying attention to the, the trestle. That's kind of irrelevant. I want to get stopped. And then if you're looking at the foreground, or then presumably later when we look at the trestle, that's going to look really nice. But, oh, I mean, okay, that's a screenshot moment right there. Right here. And I'm going to cheat. I'm going to pause it because I also want to set the marker lights on this unit. And I think I could do that from here. Class lights rear. Uh, let's set that for red marker. Oh, it... Set it for the other unit. Can I do? Oh, wait. No, no, no. I know why I did that. Because it's the rear of the engine, not the rear of the train. Uh, so, class lights front red. Now we're talking. Now, now that. There we go. And we get rid of that. And we'll take our screenshot. And we'll get underway. Like, that is a cool scene. And here you are in 12 feet. In 12 feet, you could have a passing siding where you could have really cool meets like that. Okay, it's getting stopped for us. Um, I think because it had to throw the switch, so it's going to get underway for itself in a moment. And again, all those staging tracks, you're going to be able to fit tons of mainline trains that you could cycle through. You could run this on your own. You can run with other people. I think it really has a lot of longevity as a plan. I think this is something that I love the balance of mainline running uh, and just being able to watch a train go in circles versus, hey, I want to get my hands on and actually be switching cars and stuff. But I think that's a really good juxtaposition. Uh, looks like I might need to manually change the switch for that. Oh, no, it's underway. And what we're going to try doing uh, on the next cycle, so once we're done running it this time around, uh, oh, by the way, that looks really cool. That looks really cool. Um, but on the next go around, we're going to have these two continuing to run. But we're gonna get into uh we're gonna switch the cement plant 
I'm gonna set the cars up so we have to use the little critter to move them, and then we'll run the SD9 to, to make the pickup. Might just have the SD9 go in there, just pick up the cars, but we'll see how time is for us. Uh, and, hold, and, then, and then we can see here what it's doing behind the fascia and staging. That is so cool. Oh. Every time I build one of these layouts, it's going to be just a repeat story of, oh, I want to have this in my house. Oh, I want to have this in my house. This is why I build them in The Sim, because I don't have enough houses to make this work as a regular thing. Oh, and let's... Oh, that... Uh, I don't know if you guys caught that. The semaphore just got knocked down. And here we have this coal drag going around. I mean, this is... This is really sweet. I mean, 12 feet, like... You know, I don't care if you have to fit this in a bedroom. You could fit this in a bedroom. You could fit this in an apartment. And and you're you're running mainline traffic? Like that's bonkers. And I don't think the fact that it's N scale is a detriment. I mean, so you figure this is probably like the size you're gonna experience it at. But if you've got this killer mountain scenery to work with, it's gonna be really boss. Uh oh. <laughs> Whoops, we crested the hill and now we're flying down it. Oopsie doopsie. Okay, uh, so much for getting a first glimpse over the trestle. Um, we'll just enjoy that view the next time it comes around. Uh, you gonna make this available for download? Yes, Gary, don't worry. This will be available for download. Um, I, I would say... Um, so it's certainly by the time it makes it on the show. Like, I, I'm going to do an edited what makes this layout great, like, four-minute overview of this layout and talk about it in a condensed form, and it'll be tied in with that. Um, so I'd say give it a couple months, but you'll be, you will be seeing this come out. Um, oh, I stopped under the bridge. Oops. But you could do that. I mean, you could, like, if you had a yard master for your staging yard, you could justify that operationally um but yeah that's cool that is really cool i'm i'm really happy with this so yes uh that's part of the reason so that's a good question gary and honestly that's part of the reason i do this show is because uh, i'm doing it to illustrate these concepts and not just through the live stream and not just through the edited episodes but also because i want you to be able to play it for uh, I want you to be able to play it on your own. I think that you can learn so much from playing it. I mean, I could talk about it till I'm blue in the face, which sometimes after three hours of streaming, I feel that a little bit that way. But um, the reality is, I think that even where I find this layout to be amazing, maybe it's not your cup of tea, but you wouldn't realize that until you're actually running it and you're saying, well... You know, maybe I want to do Steam Era, but there's no turntable. Although you could fit a turntable in there, so I think that could be worked with. But point being, maybe you find things that wouldn't be your cup of tea, but you're not going to know that till you try it. So yes, uh, all of the routes that I feature on the show are ones that uh, I want to make sure are available for download in some capacity, so you can actually get to experience them and uh, and try them out for yourself and see what you like about them. Well, now that we've got our, our trains back in staging, uh, we're going to want to get our local queued up, and we're going to want to get our uh, hopper set up for the cement plant. Um, so we will go back to F1, and we will do that. And so we'll put this little guy over uh, here. Uh, that looks like it might be slightly off center. A little bit. Oh, except I can't do a lot of critters there, so we'll move that to this side. Uh, yeah, that'll work for now. And now move it back. And that's another great thing. It's just you're playing along and you say, oh, wait, I want to adjust this one thing. And it's super easy to go in there, make the adjustment. And then you're back running. Uh, the grain elevators, yes. The, uh, 
railroad mods, grain elevators are nice, but this is a cement plant. So uh, those will probably appear elsewhere for another project. Okay, so we are going to run this. Uh, that doesn't look cool. That's three hoppers. Uh, I guess maybe three hoppers is the limit if you want to be able to spot them. So we'll just say three hoppers. I mean, three hoppers, four hoppers, not really a big difference. So we're going to say these are empties so that we have to spot them. And then we will uh, get our extra. Uh, we'll make sure it has three of those. Um, and what else are we going to throw into that mix? Um, uh, this and, and maybe some R box. I think I have in this train. Yeah. Box car. Uh, our box. Let's see what I've got as our boxes. Oh, that's a nice one. Okay. And maybe just a couple of those. I don't want to get too, too down the rabbit hole as far as I was concerned. Um, okay, so. And then we've got this caboose there. Okay, we've got our local, we've got our coal drag, and we've got our main freight. So now we're going to switch back into gameplay. We're going to put both of these mainline trains in AI mode and just see how we do as far as dispatching them back and forth. Um, because we're going to be switching the, the cement plant. So it'd be nice to have them just doing their thing in the background. So switching back to this. Now we're just going to tell it to drive. Um, you know, I'm realizing I don't think I have a speed limit set for it, hence why it's up to 40. So we're going to get an invisible speed limit set. That's how um, the default speed limit of any route is 40. But uh, if you want your train to be obeying other speed limits, it has to hit a speed limit sign, then it realizes that the track limit is lower. Uh, well, presumably I have one on the other side, so I'll just grab that and place it over. Oh, right. It's not even invisible. It's a visible speed sign, because that also makes sense. Okay, so we're going to place that right at the exit of the yard. I feel like 20 miles an hour seems to be... Um... I don't know, that placed in an awkward spot. Um seems to look right it's sort of interesting to see what quote-unquote looks right in terms of speed limits because obviously a line like this in real life might handle more like 25 or 30 but your train's going to look like it's flying across the landscape and so it makes sense to kind of go a bit slower okay so this guy's pulling out and now we're going to set this one and we're going to set this one drive and it is going to go into the siding here. And this one is set for the main. And that's set for that. Okay, so let's do some switching while we've got all this activity going on, shall we? I mean, and you figure, if you were running this on your own, you might... I mean, we're going to tempt fate a little bit by having the two trains and having to coordinate the meets. But it would be so easy to just have one train circling around. And even just one train provides some nice background scenery to enjoy. And it gives the sense that your railroad's alive and that there's all this traffic when you don't have to monitor all of it. want to change the trigger points of that because that's rather close. Okay. And we'll follow the 
this little critter here. I love this. For they did such a nice job on this 45 ton switcher. I love it. I mean, you've got the, the and 45 tonners in general with their little side rods, just the cutest things. And they're so ubiquitous. You just see them everywhere. Maybe not as many places you see the 44 tonners, but they are still quite common. And that's why I actually, so, you know, I wasn't sure about having the plant switcher, but then I, uh, then I was sent this um, by the Control Point Sims team, and I'm like, no, this has got to be the plant switcher. It just feels so right. I mean, it might be a bit old school, but I think you could probably find these as plant switchers around. Uh, let's see how we're doing. Uh, something tells me one of those trains ran into issues, because that freight train should not be taking that long to get. Oh, it is. Okay. Well, it's actually moving. Fair enough. Still got it lined for the siding. Oh, and there's our coal train coming into the scene. And see, look at all this wonderful activity you've got going on here. I mean, it's just... Like, this is just so cool. Three trains running at once. And with DCC, you could easily do this. You could have them all be individual crews. You might be able to dance between them on your own. It depends on how quick you are at the fly of things. Um, but yeah, I'm, this is this runs really nicely. I'm impressed with it. Uh, and I forgot to throw the switch to the lead. I'm so enamored by the scenery, I keep forgetting to do... And, you know, take a shot every time Nick forgets to throw a switch, too. But, uh... Uh, Pacific Productions, I think there's a way to set up how far away the switches lock up. Yes, that is a thing. I just haven't done it here yet. Um, which I could, but... Yeah, I'm not overly concerned about it, so I'm just gonna leave it for the moment. Okay, and our meet time perfectly so we can line both of those trains for the yard. They are both set to go. They won't even have to stop. That was so perfect. And not getting too distracted. Let's actually see what we've got going on with this plant switcher. And you know, even with just these three cars, I feel like... It gets the point across. It gets the point that, like, if you operate in a way where you've got to actually stop, wait for each car to load, it simulates this industry nicely without getting repetitive. Oh, yeah, Scuff. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. I'll illustrate that just for the sake of it. So, this is a train Z note. If you want to change how close your, uh, you are to your switches, um, before they lock up, you go to trigger radius, advanced, you see the default's 20, set that to zero, then click this button, set trigger radius, and then click on your switches, and, um, you have to manually click the switches you want to adjust, and, but then they will work. So you see, even where we're kind of overlapping the switch here, now I can throw this one. And now we'll back up to the second car because we're not being too picky. I mean, look at this. This is just so nice. This ability to be able to be switching and there's a mainline train going and it can be just minding its own business. I, I love this. Uh, I think what we'll, we'll stop that coal train when it gets back to the yard just so that, uh, so that I can properly focus on what I'm doing. Um... And that way you kind of get the point across, which is to see you can have two... So this is illustrating the concept. You can have two trains moving at the same time and be airing out your switching at the cement plant. Completely isolated. Three trains moving on a 12-foot layout and plenty of space between them. And now we just set this last car, and obviously because it's the last car, we can get this guy tucked out of the way. And we'll put him back in the shed so that there's room to park the caboose for when the local comes in. Uh, yeah, Rich, the, the, um, 
So yes, the Digitrax throttles have two knobs. Honestly, though, my preferred method of DCC operation is uh, wireless throttles, specifically my cell phone. So I have engine driver set up on my cell phone. Um, so those are who are unfamiliar. A lot of DCC systems, not all of them, but a lot of them will have some way of being able to either broadcast a wireless network. I'm thinking mainly Digitrax here. That's the one I'm most familiar with. Oh, that's a cool scene. Um, or you can get the Digitrax or the, the DCC system to interface with JMRI. And then uh, that can serve as your, your broadcast hub. But the point being that there are ways so that you can broadcast your DCC wirelessly and then you can use your cell phone as a throttle. I, oh wow, I'm just noticing, look at this. They've got the flaps moving on the exhaust. How sweet is that? Sorry, I just got really excited about that because look at the exhaust. That is so cool. Anyway, okay, so point is that you can use your cell phone to control trains and what I like about it is that it's really uh, simple to switch between trains. You could actually visually see your buttons. Um, there, there are certain advantages. Because the Digitrax throttles, I have one, but it doesn't even have the screen. It's the like the small, cheaper one. So I do prefer running with. Um, I prefer running with the wireless uh, system, and the, with Digitrax. They're, they make this box and you plug it into a layout just like you would with um, with a throttle and you are you're set it it, it will broadcast um, automatically and I know this works because I took it to a layout recently and I just plugged it in like a regular throttle and it worked without any sort of issue. So, um, that, I, I'm a huge believer and proponent of using, uh, DCC, uh, using wireless, because with Android, there's the engine driver app, and with, uh, iPhone, there's the Wii Throttle app, super easy to use. Okay, local time. So we've got our loads uh, ready to go for the local. Uh, so now we're going to play test with that. And we're just going to keep this guy running here on the main, but we're going to take the cold, uh, cold drag off. And this SD9 has a great little bit of road power as well. Perfect for the local. That's, as I said last time, the reason in part that I chose the commonwealth railway to do with this track plan is because given the available motive power i felt like it was a really good fit in terms of you have all these mainline engines with a little bit of road freight in the form of this um and it's a good balance and it, it mirrors what the layout handles a lot of mainline with a little bit of road freight got our switches lined out so now we'll actually properly follow it over the uh over the viaduct we'll get the oh wait did i already line him for the siding oh no he's taking the main okay so he's gonna be staying to the main which is perfect because then once we get there um actually i'm gonna need to stop him on the main because i need to get there with my train so we're gonna set the switch against him um and then we'll be good to run. Yep, got to get a shot of it going over the Commonwealth Railway Bridge.
We didn't talk about it much, but I'm actually... So, admittedly, this could probably be smoothed a bit more in terms of going from these trees to just grassland. But given that I'm only thinking about it now, it's clearly not that big of an issue. Oh, here we go over the trestle. super happy with that I gotta say hope you guys are as well hope you find all this interesting I, I I try to make sure that I'm providing the right amount of commentary so you could like get a sense of what I'm thinking as far as the possibilities with this having that little bit of a viewing window here through the trees but still giving it that sense of depth Marker lights on the caboose. Nice touch. Okay, we've got this guy waiting on the main for us. And we're lined in for the siding, which is perfect. We're going to be set to go with our switching in just a moment after we go down the slide. And you figure, too, like, let's say you have more... Imagine what you could do if you were combining this layout... But then rather than it just disappearing to a staging, you had like a whole basement and you were extending that further. I mean, you, you could have multiple control points. You could really simulate the whole Yoho, uh, the whole Yoho sub. And now we'll see what it looks like. No, I think this one, kudos to Tom Vanaman for, for his design on this. I think that he came up I think he said he designed it with his brother Mike. Um, but either way, kudos to them. They came up with a really great track plan. I think this thing rocks. Uh, I think it, it, there's a, so much replay value in it. I think you could run it Steam Era because you could stick a turntable in your staging or you don't even need it because as long as you have the engine facing the right way coming out, it's just going from one end to the other. There's a lot of a lot you could do with this for sure And yes, I realize this is end scale, so this isn't quite the size we'd experience it at. It'd be more like this. But you know, I think it. I think that you'll still get a really good experience out of this. I, I and I think it does have to be end scale. I think that if you tried an HO, I mean, if you do it in an HO, you start to run into issues of depth, namely with here. Like, if this is HO, it might start to become a little bit unworkable. Unless you can access this side, then you might be okay for working that. Um, okay, why is this still stopped? You can go. You have a green light. All right. Oh, uh, did you hear that coupler slack running in as it pulled up or uh, I guess pulling out ah oh, so nice okay so now back to our train and we're gonna make the shove up to the cement plant Phoenix is asking will there be sessions uh I'm not planning at it, on it at this stage. Um, maybe like a base session where I've just got trains staged and set to go. Um, doing sessions where it's... Where you have to set like setting up the meets and, and like setting every single move is more work than I want to put into a single 
session. Um, not because it isn't worth it, but just because I want to move on to the next project. So I think I would set up a base session, but I basically just place the trains and write out the directions of here's how it's intended to be played. Um, which I try to do from the standpoint that then somebody downloading the route kind of has some idea of how to run it. Some routes, like this one's pretty obvious how you run it, but there's others that I create where you might not quite immediately grasp the operational scheme, so I do like detailing that a bit more. So by this logic, you've got to, you know, you have to, the, I think the only thing that's kind of tricky about this is just knowing that if you're running this, you have to run it. Uh, if you're switching the cement plant, you have to run it um, as a westbound. And... Uh, oops, I think we coupled up to the 44 tunnel. Okay. This is pushing it. I, I, I mean, partially because you're putting the caboose on a curve and that'll be a little tricky to recouple as well, especially in end scale. But... Uh, you know, you could, you could put the building further back, um, or if you're doing a custom building, maybe the switch, uh, and that lead comes off of here, or maybe you do what we were originally planning to, which is just having the switch, um, going off in this direction, but I like how this came out scenically, so we're gonna stick with this. So we're just dropping off these three empties on the track. I like this better than how we were running it last week with certainly better than tying up the main, but I also think it's better than having eight cars and you're pulling two sidings worth. Not that that isn't realistic. Um, it probably is more realistic, but I think it just flows better as it is here. You know, every time you're making a layout, you're making some compromises in terms of how the real world functions. It's really just a case of what compromises you're willing to make. And shrinking down the amount of car output from this industry, I think that's fine. I think it's necessary. Oh. Oh, I should have gotten a shot with the caboose over the bridge. But maybe it'll come around in time before we're... Uh, before we pick up the next set and pull out. So we'll see how that works out. And then here's our engine back here. And it's working a little bit because this is working up a grade. And yeah, you could put this on completely level ground, but I think it, it's nice to have it somewhat embedded. Oop. Yeah, you, uh ran just a little too far and so we're gonna we're gonna rescue it we're gonna use the the digital equivalent of the five fingered crane and we're just gonna get get this put back together that that was that was nothing that was that was nothing you you you, you saw nothing right we we all agree that we saw nothing there great okay uh where were we ah yes reversing this train Okay, now we're definitely stopping in the clear. Uh, looks like we're stopped with this guy. I'm gonna... Oh, of course, because it went into the SD9 side. Oh, it's already fixed itself. Okay. I think this is a good amount of work for it, too. And so... If if we were running this as a, I think the sweet spot for number of crews is probably three. You have a dispatcher and you've got three crews. So whoever is running the local can run the plant switcher when they're not running the local. But again, this is one where I think that if you're running on your own, it's not gonna feel like where are all the other trains. I think that it's important to be mindful when you're building a layout are you going to be filling enough of the layout in terms of operations? 
Is it a layout that you're mainly going to run on your own? Do you have other model raritors in your area that you're likely going to run with? Uh, in which case that you could get away with running with or building a layout that's super big, partially from the standpoint of having those operators being able to run the layout with you, partially from the standpoint of completing the layout. I think building a layout within your, your means of scope is important. Um, so there's something to be said for building a big layout if you could have the operators. I think that there's also something to be said where if you're mainly going to be running it solo, then you want to probably keep it on the smaller side or at least I won't say it has to be on the small side but you want to make sure that it doesn't feel lonely if you're running these things by yourself again oh come on I put okay to be fair to me I mean it is all essentially my fault so we're, we're kind of not clearing anybody here but I did put those cards too close to the back so uh Again, we will rerail these. I really should probably put some invisible track there. I like doing that to give myself a little bit of flexibility. Um, but, oh well. Here we go. Okay, once again, you saw nothing. Once again, here we are. And we're we're getting ourselves set up. I'm noticing how the ditch lights are coming on and off, depending on uh, which direction we're heading. That's a nice touch. Uh cup of coffee continuing at the rail yard or reviewing new routes with content for mscs or train c not at this stage i feel like the thing with at the rail yard, and i talked a little bit about this before is i i reached a point where i felt like i'd said what i needed to say it's not that there aren't new products that wouldn't be worth reviewing i i think there are but creatively what more can i accomplish with the show um because i felt like i i plateaued not like it, it got bad but just like i i did what i needed to do and i kind of pushed the format as much as i could push it um and so i hope that as you're watching these new episodes of what makes this layout great that especially, I mean, the, the live streams are the live streams, but the edited ones, um, that you get a little bit of that at the rail yard feel from them. Because I feel like I'm bringing a lot of that editing. Wait, why do I only have one car? I totally had more than one. Okay, we'll get the other two. We'll, we'll do it the fair and square way and actually go back to the others. Um, but in terms of um, doing more at the rail yard, I wouldn't rule it out as a possibility, but right now this is uh doing what makes this layout great is is pushing me creatively and i like that push so i hope you enjoy it as well and, and stick along for the ride um uh kevin i think this time i saw something no you did it you saw nothing nobody saw anything of course uh, and when i'm live streaming oh look at that isn't that just the coolest oh that i mean this is totally screenshot time right here right i mean we got to do this okay screenshot and screenshot to get a couple of different perspectives oh yeah right there oh i should have put the extra lights on this one let's stick them on now class lights white okay yeah, now we've got the extra lights on there. Okay, now we can go get our caboose. And I'm also going to try to make a point. Hopefully we'll get the caboose by the time it's crested the hill, because I want to watch it as it uh, comes around the trestle. That'll be a good uh, moment to see. Uh, the one thing I liked about uh, the rail yard is the music used. Uh, yeah, and I... You know, I, I I liked creatively the music that I could use for that. Um, hopefully you like the music that I'm using in these What Makes This Layout Great music or videos as well. Because um, I, as I say, I'm a musician. I care about the quality of the music. To me, it's a big motivator to how I put these videos together. 
That's some tight clearance. Uh, yes, very very tight. But it's model rarity. We can we can have a little bit of uh, fun with it. Uh, not what I wanted to press. I wanted to uncouple that. And just in time to watch this. Actually, I'm gonna make my camera a little wider so we can properly see it. Oh yeah, right there. pausing it just so that we can take a look and see i mean that trestle scene is just nice want to put some more forest undergrowth along here uh to build this up a bit more but i like that oh yep another screenshot moment and actually we can pause it right about there and then oh yep there we go that's the stuff right there uh, and then we'll move it to here so that, yes. I want to see the logo. There we go. Right there. And now we'll pull out. Oh, that's just so nice. It's just a matter of, look at all this we have going on. All this. It's such a little space. And just to give a little bit of variety operationally, we're going to wait for the freight train to show up um before we take off because yes it, i could stop it in staging but i think it it's realistic to have us waiting for the mainline freight oh i love this i i'm really happy with this i i hope you guys have enjoyed this live stream as much as i have i hope that once this is released that you enjoy running it um this is something that you probably wouldn't need to do on your own layout version of the layout because you would never see this view, but we do actually have the function and signals there. Um, but you can kind of assume what it is. So basically, we're just going to say, hey, when the train's visible, we should probably stop. Uh, Tree Swain reminds me of Railworks Dovetail Games Train Simulator. What I like about this version of trains is the ability to test model track plans. Yes. I I've dabbled a little bit with the, the route builder scenario designer um, in, uh, in Railworks. And it's certainly better than the MSTS one, but it's not as intuitive as this. I, I, I don't think it's quite as drop and go for building model railroads. Uh, narrow gauge, you're looking awesome. Probably been asked this a million times, but where are the locos from? They are from our sponsor, Control Point Simulations. Uh, go to controlpointsimulations.com. Uh, a couple of these are freeware. So if you see these M the, the M420s you see here, uh, those are available for free download from their website. Uh, the SD40s, um, the, and the SD40-2, well, SD40-2 and SD40-2Fs, uh, as well as the M630s that are on the head end of the cold train, um, those are from, um, th those are part of their private car, uh, so you, uh, you can go to controlpointsimulations.com and join their private car and then you get access to these engines um and they are well while we're waiting for this guy we'll take a, a look at the, the detail on this i mean they have the function class lights 
uh, functioning ditch lights. I they were flashing earlier um, for me. Maybe because it's on automatic, it's not. Um, they're not flashing at the moment. Uh, you can open. Th get this. You can open up the windows. So if you look at the the cab right now, you'll see the windows opening up. But we'll leave that open. Uh, you've got the. Fr you can front open the front door. Um, and this part's really cool. You can open up the hood doors and actually see the prime mover inside. I mean, that is some serious attention to detail. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I definitely recommend you check these out uh, and I appreciate Control Point Simulations for, for partnering with me for this project, uh, sending me the engines and uh, to Sam, the creator of the Commonwealth Railway, to giving his approval on making this a, an official Commonwealth Railway route. Um, I just thought it would be such a, a fun, creative opportunity. And I think this really, you know, it, it, as an MR rail route, it would have been cool too, but I think this railroad really fits it. And the engines are just so nice. Uh, Canadian train dude, I modeled those M630Ws for control point sips. Well, you did a good job. Those M630s are nice. Those are super nice engines. So here we are in the hole and we're waiting back here because if we're treating this like a real railroad, obviously we wouldn't be able to stick our head through the, the backdrop. And... Waiting for the tail to clear. Just, you gotta love that super elevation. It just gives it so much visual drama. Good visual drama. Looks like the dispatcher's got us lined out for the main, so we'll pull out of here. Except I need to switch over to the local, and now... Oh, here we go. So, uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, quick uh, Patreon shout-out. Thank you to my supporters on Patreon who are helping to make both uh, what makes this layout great and the roundhouse podcast happen if you go to patreon.com slash the roundhouse you can join for as little as a dollar a month and i really appreciate the support and at five dollars a month you're getting early access to episodes of both the roundhouse podcast and what makes this layout great and tonight if you join today We've got next week's episode of What Makes This Layout Great already available to you. It's of the Susquehanna and New York Railroad, not to be confused with the New York, Susquehanna, and Western, completely different railroad. Um, and you should totally check it out. Uh, and so $5 a month, you'll get early access to that and continual episodes of this show and that. Um, so I encourage you to check that out, and I appreciate those of you who are supporting the show there. Oh, look at this. this oh, this is so cool. Here we go. So we, we're pulling out of the siding, and then you've got this. You've got the, the manifest train climbing through the mountains. I mean, that is just so cool. I, I'm really happy with how this turned out as a build, but I think credit goes to... Tom Daneman for designing this plan. I think it really holds up. I'm looking forward to doing the full What Makes This Layout Great edited episode talking about this. But I think if I were to summarize it, the three things that make it work, you it's mainline railroading in 12 feet. That, that, that passing siding makes all the difference. Number one. Uh, number two, I'm just going to get my switches lined here because I want to put the local in this part of staging and then we can run the manifest on the other track. Um, and you can see now our switch is lined for green or the signal and then knocking down the signal. I love the semaphore. That is such a nifty touch. Um, so you've got mainline railroading in 12 feet that's good for a variety of eras. Uh, you ha and number one, number two, 
You've got the cement plant, so you have the ability to do locals. And I would say number three is probably the way in which this divide, I love this divide between uh, the trestle and the uh, passing siding. I think it's really well done so that even though it's on the same visual, you know, it's the same field of view, they feel completely removed. So th those are probably the three talking points I'll mainly address in the edited episode. But I think there's a lot of replay value to this route. This is this is a fun one. This has been a fun build. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this as a as you know watching it unfold over the past two streams. And next week uh, is the public release of our next episode of What Makes This Layout Great, which is going to be the Susquehanna and New York Railroad. And then the week after that, we're going to be starting a new build. It's going to be a Conrail route. But not Conrail as you might think of it. That's my teaser for that one. Um, we're going to have some fun with that. Okay, so we're getting tucked away in this little siding for... Uh, <laughs> and you can see this, uh, this freight train is just dying for us to get out of the way. So remember how I was showing trigger radius uh, for switches? This is where you'd want to increase it to make, force the train to stay back further. Uh, but it's staging, so it's not really as important here. But we've got that lined up. We've got our uh, manifest back on the siding with the loaded cement cars. And we'll just make sure this guy is tucked in here. And then we're gonna we're gonna wrap up this this stream for tonight, guys. But uh, I really appreciate you being along for the ride. I hope that you've enjoyed it. And please do leave me feedback, whether you're uh, watching now or you're watching this on repeat, um, because my goal is to make content that's appealing to you. Trying to vary the types of routes, uh, the types of railroads, the scales. Uh, the next layout, uh, so Susquehanna in New York, that's an HO layout. The next live build, that's going to be an HO layout. And that's going to be one, the, old, uh, the other interesting thing about that, that's going to be one where the track in real life has been laid, but the scenery has not been done. So I've specifically been asked to help realize the scenery. So that's going to be a whole, whole lot of fun. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, so uh, responding to last round of comments before wrapping this up um well super board thanks for the broadcast I'm glad you enjoyed it um and uh, uh white star will you ever review railroads online yes but not until it's out of its early access stage um and that might bring me out of at the rail yard retirement i might do that as an at the rail yard review but I want to see where it is a year from now, or close to a year. Um, there's still a lot of bugs to be ironed out. It's still, from a stand, like, I want to see it get to the point where if I'm going to recommend it, I can recommend it not just to people who are really comfortable working with train sims and computer games, but people who are new. And right now, I feel like the learning curve is still very steep. So if I'm reviewing it, I want to review it in a more final, finished stage. Um, Kevin Seibert, a giant route would be awesome. We have some giant routes coming up. Um, uh, we, we do. Actually, Susquehanna, New York is a 58... It fits into a 58-foot by 17-foot space. So I, that, I would say that's pretty big. Now, the layout's maybe only half that space. Um because there's a family room in part of it. It's one that I, I saw the layout. I did. I was part of an op session. I fell in love with it. I said, I want to bring it home with me. So I built it in the train stand. That one's pretty big. Um, I think 1920s steam era, single track passage siding. Um, so yeah, that's what I've seen for now. Now's a great time to wrap up. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed our presentation tonight. I hope you've enjoyed watching the unfolding of 
the Commonwealth Railway Yoho subdivision with only one building. Uh, and be sure to let me know what you think. Uh, we will be again next week. So that's March 24th of 2022. Going to be releasing the next episode of What Makes This Layout Great. Uh, episode 3. And then week after that, we'll be back to live streaming. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you have a great rest of your night. And thank you for riding along. Take care.